Welcome back, everybody. This is uh, number five, I believe, in the Facebook mail call session, if you will. Side note, one thing that uh, is certainly different than when I did this before is that uh, last time I did this a few months ago, I posted, you know, post up whatever you want. I think I had like 80 questions in a week. Uh, this time I had well over 100 questions within a couple hours. So the channel's growing. That's a good thing, but uh, a lot more questions. So without further ado, let's get into it. I do have the watch running again. I'll try not to run totally over time like I did last time. Uh, first question, manual or automatic in that Mustang GT? Manual, of course. Um, cheap night vision, Gen 1 or Gen 2 stuff. Uh, is it worth it? Should we splurge and get the Gen 3 stuff? Um, Gen 1 and Gen 2, generally speaking, work. Uh, you're going to have uh, less battery time. You're going to have less uh, crispness in the image. And you're going to have a greater chance of washing out. Um, but they are less expensive. So... It really depends what you value. I can never answer worth questions because worth is relative to every person uh, based on your budget, how much you value the item. So uh, that's those are the big differences. Um, but pick whatever you can get. And even, you know, a Gen 2 device is better than nothing, you know, if you want night vision capabilities. So uh, next question, why does tool ammo, ammo uh, cause stuck cases in the chamber of some AR-15s and not others? Tolerance stacking and poor load quality. Um, AR-15s, like any rifles, have tolerances that they have to be within to meet a certain spec. Um, so the chambers are the same. They gauge them. You know, no-go gauges, go gauges, and all that stuff with headspace as well as uh, chamber dimensions. And um, there's a certain amount that is acceptable. So if you combine that with tool ammo, which I've said before here, in my opinion, is the worst factory ammo um, out there on the market, um, which is generally under under pressure, under loaded, sometimes has inconsistent loadings, whatever the case may be. Um, it's a recipe for disaster if you're on the tight side of the chamber. Um, so that's why, um, that's generally why. What's your favorite revolver and why? Okay, uh, favorite revolver? Probably, um, probably the Smith & Wesson Model 10. Not because it's the best revolver. Um, it's kind of like the Glock 19 of the revolver world, if you will. They're everywhere, they're common, they work. Um, they're relatively inexpensive, um, and they shoot a common caliber, so uh, I guess that would be it. Model 10, maybe? They're, they're ugly, but they work. Um, Cookie Crisp or Captain Crunch Crunchberries? Neither. I don't eat food like that. I, <laughs> I tend to eat relatively healthy, and I don't eat stuff like that. Um, why well, does... No, same one. What you, da, 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 da. All right, next one. Do you, do you prefer Keymod? And or are there modular type handguards or, this is not written correctly. All right, so what I think he means is do you prefer key mod um, or do you prefer the kind with Picatinny rails on there? So um, if I had to choose, I'd choose key mod because um, you can always add rails there. It's much lighter. I think it's a very good system. Um, again, uh, five years from now, 10 years from now, we'll know better if Keymod or MLOC was the way that people decided to go. But right now it looks like those are the two main competitors. And um, honestly, there might be both. That might be the op option out there, but I definitely prefer it over the uh, quad rails that are just kind of heavy and have a lot of space that you end up not using. So that's it. Okay, um, next question. I was curious what your thoughts were on companies like Glockworks and Salient. What is your opinion on having those, those done to your carry pistol versus keeping in stock? I see you like the Wilson Combat M9. Um, so it triggered this question in my mind. Um, from a reliability standpoint and a legal standpoint. So I'm not a lawyer. Um, I don't even play one on the internet. Um, so I really don't want to go there. But generally speaking, um, I personally, for my defensive guns, as I've said before, I keep the, the Glock 5.5 um, or 5 pound, whatever you want to call it, trigger in there. Um, I like it. I've, I'm used to it by now. And I shoot it just as well, if not better, actually, than the lighter triggers, just because I'm, again, used to it. Um, a Glock trigger isn't really heavy in my opinion, um, so if you want to lighten it, that's fine, uh, uh, your call, um, but I don't think it's necessary. Generally speaking, I think when people do that, uh, generally speaking, I know I don't get offended, I think it's honestly because they haven't really mastered uh, the basics, because if you if you can do the fundamentals of shooting, you can shoot a Glock pistol well. Five pounds is not, is not hard to overcome, um, but you know, companies like Salient, I, I have no experience with Glockworks, however, I've, I've shot several Salient guns. Um, they're awesome. I mean, they do really, really good work. Um, if you want to run it in a competition or, you know, if you want to use it for home defense, it's your prerogative. But, um, I mean, they do good work. They do quality work. Again, is it worth it? I don't know. I don't know. I can't answer that for you. 
Uh, what is love is the next question. And my response is, baby, don't hurt me. Uh, no more. Um, <laughs> next question. Do you think that these expensive custom AK builders who are using nothing more than 4140 uh, green mountain barrels on their parts kits builds are extremely overpriced for what they say they are. This is kind of like a rant. For what they say they are compared to decent made import AK like the Arsenal SR 107, 104, and Sam7 series, which have some of the best CHF uh, called Cold Air Force AK barrels. That's a big question. It's like two paragraphs. Um, right now, in terms of uh, nitriding or QMP or Q, whatever they call it, uh, Q, QPQ or whatever, uh, melodite, nitriding, all those processes that I've talked about here on the, on the channel, um, on a 4140 barrel is sort of unproven. I haven't seen any documented tests in terms of how long they last. Some folks say that they will last longer than the chrome line barrels, and um, I really don't know. I haven't seen any documented evidence on that. Um, again, what we're talking about here is worth. So are those rice prices that I believe he's, I'm guessing he's talking about uh, rifle dynamics here because um, there has been some controversy on the internet about that. I don't know. I can't answer your worth question, but if you guys really want, you know, a cold hammer forged barrel and you have a parts kit, you can go buy a cold hammer forged barrel. They're still out there and you can just uh, add that to your parts kit and make it work. So it's up to you, whichever you value more. All right, uh, you can own you can only own one AR. Which one and why? I'm assuming we're talking factory ARs here. Uh, I would build one would be my answer, but I can only own one. Um, it's it's gonna be, and I say this I say this all the time. It's probably gonna be a Daniel Defense or BCM, one of the two. They make very very good quality uh, rifles. I I would go with a Colt Hammer Forge barrel. Um, I don't know, factory model off the top of my head. Uh, maybe one of the lightweight barrel, Daniel Defense Rifles, I guess, 16 inch barrel, we'll go with that. Um, sure. Uh, what, what brands of ballistic sun shooting glasses do you like? Um, basically the ones that you guys see me shoot here, shoot with here on the channel. Um, you know, Oakley ESS, uh, Wiley X. I do like the Oakley Prism system. I did review that. Uh, you guys, some of you guys saw that. If you didn't see it and you're interested, uh, check out, just Google Prism. Mr. Guns and Gear will pop right up. Um, I do think that's a good system. It does seem to actually work. Um, whether Again, whether or not it's worth the cost of the lenses, it's up to you, but it does seem to work. Um, I'd be interested in knowing more about your camera setup and what software you use for your Chroma keyboard. Um, I don't know what camera I use off the top of my head. I'm looking at it. It doesn't have a label or a nomenclature on the front. Um, but I'll post that here in the, right below me uh, in the annotations. It is a Sony. All my cameras are Sony's um, just because they interface well with Mac software, which is what I use. I use um, right now, I use Final Cut Pro. Um, I used to use iMovie for a long time, but then iMovie crapped out on me. Some of you guys know this who follow me on Facebook, and it was like a two-week delay in all videos because iMovie would not work on my uh, computer at all. I went back and forth with Apple and finally broke down and bought Final Cut Pro. And it's sort of been a blessing in disguise because um, Final, uh, Final Cut Pro, even with my mediocre skills of uh, software knowledge, is a very, a very good program that allows you to do a lot of really cool stuff. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's crazy thunder outside. Anyway, um, so yeah, so Final Cut Pro and then whatever camera I annotate here. Again, though, guys, uh, after the crowdsourcing campaign, we're going to have new camera equipment here soon. So that's, that's, that's good. And when that happens, you guys will know all about it. All right. Uh, chips on the rails of AR bulk carrier groups. What causes it and is it a big issue? Maybe other things to keep an eye on with other components of a BCG uh, bulk carrier group. Um, so chips on the rails, it's hard to say. Um, it, it could be anything from just general wear to uh, problems in your upper receiver to problems with heat treating. Uh, it could be any of those. Uh, is it a big deal? No. Um, uh, not at all. Um, other things to keep an eye on with your components of your bulk hair group. Um, keep an eye on, you know, um, the lugs like I talked about before. You know, you want to make sure there's no stress on, on certain lugs, the ones that I identified in my bulk hair group video. And also, um, you want to watch, obviously, your gas rings. You know, check those out because for signs of wear, um, those do tend to go uh, before other parts tend to go. What's next? 
first AR, okay, here's the question. First AR build without breaking the bank. Um, I did a, a video on uh, the Palmetto State Armory Cold Hammer Forged Carbine um, kit. Awesome, awesome choice if you're looking for one. Um, and they're actually available. They come up from time to time over on Palmetto's website. Um, you could also get one of their premium line uh, build kits. They're great. Uh, they're premium barrels, FM barrels, uh, 4150. Um, mil spec steel, cold uh, chrome line, they're great. Um, on a budget, they're tough, very tough to beat. So take a look at either the Cold Hammer Forge barrels over there, the kits over at Palmetto, or the uh, premiums. They're very, very good, and uh, they'll treat you well. <laughs> okay, why will my Waffen Works AK AK-74 only take Pro Mag magazines? No Circle 10, Circle 21, Tapco, nothing else. I have no idea what you're rifle looks like bro not a clue so without seeing it i have no idea however one good thing for you waffenworks owners out there are folks considering waffenworks is that uh they've been there is no waffenworks anymore they don't exist um they've been bought out by a company called ddi just google it it'll come right up um ddi is now handling all of their customer service issues and warranty issues for waffenworks rifles even the ones that were uh, produced previous uh, to them taking over so they have awesome customer service if you guys have the issue an issue with them like like you do here apparently uh, with your magwell or mag catch it's probably one of the two um call up ddi and they will fix it for you uh everything i've read about ddi has been uh very positive so it looks it looks good for you on that front three-part question he says uh number one for someone who concealed carries how often do you recommend going to the range uh, part two Number two in this question, what drills do you prefer while at the range? Number three, if only allotted, if only allotted, it's spelled wrong, but if only allotted 50 rounds, what drills, what would, what would you drill at the range to maximize your training? You guys got to stop typing on your iPhones, man, these questions, <laughs> they don't come out right. Okay, um, so, so first part, for someone who conceals carry, conceal carries, how often would you recommend going to the range? As often as you can afford. Um, whether or not you prioritize it or not is, is your call. Ultimately, you're responsible for carrying that gun and you're responsible for your actions should you have to use it. Um, so whatever, however often you feel comfortable with, that's how often you should go. But more is generally better. Um, what dr drills do I prefer at the range? Um, I mean, there's so many drills. Uh, the failure drill is a good one. You know, two to the chest, one to the head is always a good drill because it's very realistic. Um, generally speaking, that drill with most major calibers will uh, will will cause the threat to cease. Um, so that's a good drill. There's a million of them. The Bill Drill, Bill President, they they're all good. Um, anything that pro uh, that causes you to to think while you're shooting is always good because uh, in real life you'll have to think while you're shooting. Should you have to? What is your favorite AR AK handgun shotgun? Oh, that's a tough question, guys. Like it could change tomorrow. You know, uh, my favorite AR right now that I own. And I don't know. Uh, favorite one that I own is probably the uh, the build with the BCM barrel that you guys have seen here before, the Cryptek Black Forge receiver um, in the KMR handguard. That was really good. The Bravo uh, B5 systems saw on Bravo stock too that I really like a lot. Um, that's probably my favorite right now. Favorite AK that I own. Uh, one of my SGL 31s, I imagine, uh, would be the favorite AK. Uh, favorite handgun? That's a tough call too, man, because every day it changes. But um, you know, if I could only have one handgun, it'd be the Glock 19. That said, it's probably not my favorite. My favorite is probably either my TRP, uh, maybe the Wilson 92. That thing's pretty sweet. It's new though, so it's kind of up high on my list. Or um, I have a uh, rough texture finish, uh, RTF2, Glock 17. That's really cool. I, I like that kind of a lot. Um, so probably one of those three. Favorite shotgun that I own? Benelli M4 H2O. You guys have seen that before here on the channel. That's, that would definitely be it. Um, favorite muzzle device for an AR SBR, specifically an 11.5 inch. A suppressor is the answer. It's probably not what you meant though. So. Um, I definitely recommend a suppressor if you can get one. It mitigates recoil well and it mitigates flash very well as well as reducing the sound signature, obviously. Um, but that's probably, again, not what you meant. So if we're talking a 11.5 inch uh, rifle, generally what you want to look for there is uh, something that's going to mitigate blast because blast is an issue 
especially when you start getting below 14 inches. It, ju it just is. Um, so a really good one, one that I have on my 10.5 inch uh, SPR currently, is the White Sun Defense uh, Flash Hider Comp Combo. Um, there's really not a lot of good Flash Hider Comp Compromise type muzzle brakes. That one is one of them. Uh, it works well. It does a it does a better than nothing job at reducing muzzle rise, and it does a very good uh, job at reducing flash signature as well as concussion. Uh, it's a very good one for that. Uh, there are others though, of course. Uh, the Manticore Eclipse does a very good job for that as well, which I have on my 11.5 actually. So there you go, there's your answer. Uh, cleaning a chrome line, barrel, and upper. Recommendations, question mark. Uh, I recommend you watch my How to Clean an AR-15 video where I go over that in uh, pretty good detail. Um, one of my more popular videos out there, um, but it's not that hard. It's not that big a deal. Just clean it, uh, keep it lube, it'll, it'll work just fine. But check the video out for all the details there. Uh, what's the best 5.56 round you've used so far as accuracy goes? Um, Black Hills rounds tend to be very accurate, but again, it's going to vary widely based on the rifle. Um, you know, certain barrels like certain rounds. Generally speaking, Black Hills loads are very accurate. Occasionally, you get rifles that like the Hornady tap stuff in 75 grain. It tends to be pretty accurate. Uh, Lehigh Defense makes ammo. Uh, it's a very unique ammo. You can see, I, I do have a review of one of their one of their, I believe, 226, 223 rounds, excuse me. And that is accurate in everything. And it's a lighter weight load, and every rifle I put it in is accurate. So that's a, it's an interesting load as well. Um, so, I mean, yeah, one of those. But in all reality, if you're actually looking to get on the razor's edge of accuracy, you need to reload and reload for your rifle. So that's just that's the way it works. Uh, and the last question, I'm in time. The last question is, are you bald by choice? Hell no, man. I went bald at like 16. Uh, so... No, I'm definitely not, but I suppose I am sort of in a way because I've chosen to not never have a hair, hair transplant or anything like that or to try to have a comb over. I just embrace it, man. Drive on. If being bald is the worst thing in your life, but you have the rest of your health, who gives a crap? That's kind of how I look at it. Um, and I do. I'm relatively healthy, so no complaints there, man. Um, that's going to wrap it up here for number five. If you guys have any questions, as always, you can post below in the comments section. You can also post over at the Facebook page. Um, but thanks for watching guys. Sorry about all the rambling, but for some reason these videos tend to be somewhat popular and I, I, I almost feel bad because I'm rambling during them, but you guys seem to like them so I'll keep making them I guess. But if you guys have any questions, post them below or over at Facebook page. And like I said earlier, uh, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for subscribing. I do appreciate it. I truly do. Um, without you guys watching, there's no point in having a channel. So I uh, hope to see you guys in the next video.